Hello everyone, thanks for watching this video. Today I'm going to talk about our work, Hybrid Contrastive Quantization for Efficient Cross-View Video Retrieval. The temporal dynamics and abundant multimodal content make video one of the most informative media to humans. As videos are gaining in popularity along with social media and video sharing platforms, cross-view such as language-based video retrieval becomes an important demand for web search. In vision and language research fields, many efforts have been devoted to text video retrieval. Prior arts delve into dual encoder architectures that produce separate text and video embeddings for dense retrieval. Despite the promising performance, these methods adopt brute force search with high dimensional embeddings. They are prohibitive in practical web search due to the efficiency concern. The hamming space such that distance can be measured with fast bitwise operations. Quant Quantization methods divide real data space into disjoint clusters and approximately represent the data points in each cluster as its centroid. Pre-computing inter-centroid distances in a lookup table can largely accelerate distance computation between quantized vectors. As hashing algorithms have been implemented by many approximate nearest neighbor search libraries, such as FACE and ANOI, practical web search engines widely apply them to post-process embeddings. However, independent compression on dense embeddings can lead to large semantic deviation, which degrades the representation robustness and incurs performance decay. To mitigate the performance decay, one promising direction is to learn embedding and compression jointly. Such ideas have been explored in related fields like text embedding quantization and cross-modal image hashing, demonstrating improvements over post-compression. Compared with texts and images, Videos contain richer multimodal information and temporal dynamics that are challenging to model. Thus, representing single vectors and simply focusing on coarse grained alignment will increase the learning difficulty and result in insufficient representations. Unfortunately, there are few hashing models tailored for cross view video retrieval nor suitable hashing methods considering fine grained representation, leaving the problem of cross view video hashing underexplored. To overcome the defect, we present the first quantized representation learning method for efficient cross-view video retrieval, namely hybrid contrastive quantization. We can term it HCQ for short. Without the reliance on handcrafted hierarchical representations or complex graph reasoning, it learns quantized representations through an end-to-end -end framework. Specifically, HCQ takes advantage of transformers to encode text features and multimodal video features as bags of token embeddings, based on which coarse-grained and fine-grained semantic information is fully exploited. For the coarse-grained representations, HCQ condenses each view into a global output. For the fine-grained representations, HCQ further learns a common space with local semantic structure via a ghost VLAD module. In this space, Token embeddings of each view are softly assigned to a set of parameterized clusters, each of which stands for a latent topic or semantic concept. Learnable quantization is applied to the residual aggregations, producing fine-grained representations with complementary understanding. Moreover, we design a hybrid contrastive learning strategy that aligns text and video views at coarse-grained and multiple fine-grained levels. At each level, HCQ performs asymmetric quantized contrastive learning across the two views. This strategy serves as strong supervision on cross-view video quantization model, where contrastive alignments at different levels are mutually promoted. We evaluate the proposed method by conducting experiments on three datasets. We aim to answer the following research questions. Question 1. Compared with state-of-the-art text to video retrieval models, can HCQ keep competitive performance while showing high efficiency in computation and storage? Question 2. On the specific task of cross-view video retrieval, does HCQ outperform other embedding compression approaches? Question 3. How do different strategies contribute to the effectiveness of HCQ? We conduct experiments on three benchmark datasets. In particular, we experiment with three data splits on MSRVTT following different settings from existing text to video retrieval papers. We compare our model with 21 classic or state-of-the-art methods in text video retrieval. We report the retrieval performance in Table 1 to 3. The results show that HCQ can achieve competitive results with state-of-the-arts. 
Specifically, it outperforms most of the compared methods on MSRVTT and LSMDC. Though it does not consistently surpass MMT on activity net captions, the results are comparable. This is partly because we can only leverage motion and audio features on this dataset, which limits the strength of HCQ. Besides, we can get two findings from these results. First, multimodal cues facilitates better video understanding. Note that the best performers, including the strongest baselines such as MMT, CE and HSE, leverage multimodal information for video representations. It demonstrates the promise of leveraging more modalities than vision for video retrieval. Second, transformer helps to capture multimodal cues. Transformer-based methods like the MMT and the proposed HCQ achieve better performance than CE and HSE, showing the advantage of transformers on multimodal modeling. In addition to the retrieval performance, Efficiency is another important target for web search, since it highly relates to the scalability of the search engines. Here we show results about this rarely investigated aspect in text video retrieval. We evaluate text to video retrieval with five embedding based retrieval models, which are also best performers in table one to three. We evaluate the average query time, including the time for text encoding time on GPU and nearest neighbor search on CPU and the storage overhead for offline computed video representations. Figure 4 shows the high query speed and low memory overhead of HCQ. To answer research question 2, we benchmark various hashing methods on text to video retrieval. First, we construct hybrid contrastive transformer, HCT, by removing the quantization modules of HCQ. We adopt embedding-based hybrid contrastive learning to train HCT and extract dense embeddings. HCT can serve as a reference model for the upper bound performance. Then we apply post-processing hashing methods to generate compressed representations and conduct retrieval. Furthermore, we remove the fine-grained part of HCT and construct a dual transformer, DT, that only produces global and coarse-grained embeddings. We equip the joint learning baselines with DT. In this way, we adapt these baselines from similar hashing applications such as cross-modal image hashing and text-dense retrieval to our task. The reason for using DT rather than HCT is that these models only focus on global representation in their initial works. The results are shown in Table 4, which show consistent superiority of HCQ over other embedding compression approaches. According to the results, we can get the following findings. First, jointly learning encoder and quantization is effective to mitigate the performance decay. Compared with the best post-compression baseline, OPQ, HCQ achieves average recall increases of 1.7%, 2.6% and 1% on MSRVTT, LSMDC and ActivityNet captions, respectively. Second, the hybrid-grained contrastive learning provides a powerful supervision the representation models. We notice that joint learning baselines with DT perform relatively poorer in our benchmark. Compared with DT plus DCMH, HCQ achieves average recall increases of 6.7% and 6.5% on MSRVTT and LSMDC datasets. Compared with DT plus JPQ, HCQ achieves average recall increases of 4.5% on activity net captions dataset. The reason for large gains is that HCQ learns both coarse-grained and fine-grained quantization by contrastive learning, where the learning at different levels can mutually promote. Next, we answer the research question 3 by analyze the components in HCQ. To analyze the effectiveness of hybrid-level contrastive learning, we construct two HCQ variants. The first one is HCQ without course. It removes coarse grain parts of HCQ and only performs fine grained alignments and generates fine grained representations. The second one is HCQ without fine, which remove fine grained parts of HCQ and only performs coarse grained alignments and generates coarse grained representations. The results about the geometric mean of recall at 1, recall at 5, and recall at 10 on all datasets are shown in Figure 5. According to Figure Figure 5, removing either coarse grained part or fine grained parts of HCQ will result in poorer performance. The reason is that the coarse grained part provides an easy supervision for coarse view alignment, while the fine grained part further strengthens it with concept level information. During our submission to the conference, a valuable question from the anonymous reviewer 2 raises our interest in leveraging other BERT variants to initialize the text encoder. 
We have done experiments with BERT large, distill BERT base, Roberta base, Roberta large, XL net base and XL net large based on the hugging face implementation. The results of these trials are shown table 5. Large version of BERT models, such as BERT large and Roberta large, help to improve retrieval performance. To conclude, we make the following contributions in our paper. First, we present the first quantization learning method for cross-view video retrieval, namely hybrid contrastive quantization. Second, we propose to learn both coarse-grained and fine-grained quantizations that preserve comprehensive semantic information. Third, we design a hybrid contrastive learning strategy to align texts and videos at coarse-grained and multiple fine-grained levels. It serves as strong supervision on the cross-view video quantization model and facilitates mutual promotion across levels. Fourth, extensive experiments demonstrate that our method is competitive against state-of-the-art non-compressed methods while showing high efficiency in storage and computation. We have open-sourced our code at GitHub. Welcome to have a try. Thanks for your watching.